I'm Jane King at the NASDAQ market site. The flood of biotech IPOs already getting ready to sell stock. I'm Remy Blair in San Francisco. A new wave of biotech IPOs are on the horizon. Will we see a turnaround? And as CES gets underway, global tech sales are forecast to fall this year. What will drive consumers to spend their hard-earned dollars? Welcome to Small Cap Nation. I'm Jane King at the NASDAQ market site in Times Square. Gene therapy startup Adentis Therapeutics filed for an IPO that would raise up to $86 million. The San Francisco-based company, led by CEO Matthew Patterson, develops gene therapy treatments for X-linked myotubular myopathy. That's a condition that primarily affects muscles used for movement and occurs nearly exclusively in males. In fact, it kills one in every 500 of every 50,000 newborn boys by the time they reach two years old. Well, meanwhile, a Genentech partner has also filed for an initial public offering. A team of former pharmacyclists executives hope to raise $115 million for their cancer-fighting company. Corvus Pharmaceuticals, Burlingame, expects to use the cash to take its lead drug through clinical trials, push another drug through preclinical development, and fund other early-stage research and development. And approvals for first-of-a-kind drugs climbed last year, pushing the annual tally of new U.S. drugs to its highest level in 19 years. The rising figures reflect an industry-wide focus on drugs for rare and hard-to-treat diseases, which often come with streamlined reviews, extra patent protections, and higher price tags. The Food and Drug Administration approved 45 drugs with never-before-sold ingredients in 2015, edging past the previous year's tally of 41, which had been the highest number since 1996. Lots of small-cap companies making news today, and here's a look in today's small-cap wrap. Acceleron reportedly proposed offering 100 and $50 million worth of shares for sale. Excelsis says its Cabos Antonib shrank kidney cancer tumors. Neonodes lock up on shares expires today, and Progressive Waste is said to be exploring a sale of the company. On other biotech news, Immune Pharmaceuticals traded on the NASDAQ under the ticker symbol IMNP announced new data supporting a topical nanoformulation of cyclosporine for the treatment of psoriasis and atopic dermatitis, a severe form of eczema. Cyclosporine is an immune suppressive drug originally developed by Novartis as an oral treatment which transformed transplantation medicine. Its use in dermatology was limited to the most severe cases of psoriasis and atopic dermatitis because of severe systemic toxicity. However, a breakthrough, research as, researchers at the Hebrew University of Jerusalem, led by Professor Simon Benita, the former director of the Institute for Drug Research and head of the School of Pharmacy, have applied nanotechnology to encapsulate the cyclosporine and allow for the targeted delivery to the skin layers while limiting systemic absorption. Now, Immune's new cyclosporine topical drug is a potential competitor to another non-steroidal drug, Cris Aberol, developed by Anacor, which recently completed phase three clinical trials in atopic dermatitis, and which analysts think could reach peak sales of one to two billion dollars. Anacor's market cap is five billion dollars. Well, this adds to IMMP's franchise in immunodermatology, which also includes vertilimumab, a monoclonal antibody currently in phase two for bullous pemphigoid, an orphan autoimmune disease of the skin. Vertilimumab is expected to start phase two clinical trials this year in severe atopic dermatitis and compete with Regeneron's antibody dupilumab which achieved 75% efficacy in phase two and received breakthrough designation by the FDA. IMNP's growing pipeline in immunodermatology and its novel drugs have the potential to follow the tracks of Anacor and Regeneron. And Wendy's pledges to use only eggs from cage-free hens by 2020 in North American locations. Move will apply to the 400 locations in North America that serve breakfast. breakfast. Now, as part of its animal welfare program, Wendy's also announced it's going to eliminate gestation stalls from its pork supply chain by 2022. It's a brand new year. We had a rocky start to 2016 in global markets, but biotech startups seem to be clamoring for the IPO door. It is day five of the new year already. Several biotech names have filed for IPOs. What's behind this sudden move? 
Hi, Jane. It may be hard to believe, but biotech IPOs are making headlines. At the end of 2015, the industry took a hit and IPOs slowed down. We all remember the drug pricing controversy and how generalists headed straight for the exit signs. The latest IPO filings come ahead of next week's biotech and healthcare conferences in San Francisco. Of course, we will be covering the events here at SCN. Now, the J.P. Morgan Chase Annual Healthcare Conference is a time when many will be gauging market appetite and eyeing the competition. Among the names that filed for IPOs, we have Editas Medicine, Audentis, Bavaria Nordic, Corvus, Syndax, and Riata. That's a lot for the first week of trade in 2016, and that means millions that will be raised this year. Many in the audience may be familiar with some of the companies going public. Adetis Medicine has been in the spotlight for its gene editing technology. Is the company a sure bet? Well, it depends on who you ask, but this Cambridge, Massachusetts startup has been in focus. Editas pioneered the controversial CRISPR-Cas9 gene editing technology. It develops treatments to modify genetic defects that cause disease. Now, Editas is fairly new to the scene and has been around for just two years. It has the backing of Google Ventures and Bill Gates. Editas raised $163 million in a preferred stock offering. Google Gates Fidelity Investments bought in along with BC firms, Polaris Partners, and Flagship Ventures. Now, Editas filed for an IPO of $100 million with a proposed ticker symbol of EDIT. Institutional investors are sure to be keen on the company. It currently has a cancer therapy partnership with Juno Therapeutics. Now, keep in mind that CRISPR has not been tested in humans. Its most advanced offering is still in preclinical development, and human studies are not expected to begin until 2017. And what about the other biotech companies that are gearing up for market debuts. Audentis is an SF-based biotech that develops gene therapy products. Its offerings are aimed at patients with life-threatening rare diseases that are caused by single gene defects. It plans to raise $86.3 million and has raised about $138 million already with backing from T. Rowe Price, Venrock, and Sophie Nova Ventures. The company acquired Cardiogen Sciences and acquired a lead program for treating inherited arrhythmia diseases. Bavaria Nordic, a Danish company, boasts a vaccines in its lineup and revenue to boot. It plans to raise $86 million in its NASDAQ debut. Now, the company has a smallpox vaccine as well as a late-stage cancer vaccine, Prosvac. Meanwhile, Corvus Pharmaceuticals is based in Burlingame, California and plans to raise $150 million in its IPO. The company develops immuno-oncology therapies that utilize the immune system against cancer cells. Its founders also come from an oncology company, Pharmacyclics, which was bought by AbbVie. And Texas-based Riata Pharmaceuticals plans to raise $80 million. It is developing protein-based antioxidant inflammation of modulators for life-threatening diseases. Now, the company is older, founded back in 2002, and has major pharma names who have backed over $400 million. Its, partner, uh, its partnering deal with Abby did not work out, but it was one of the biggest deals ever. And Waltham, Massachusetts-based Syndex is a clinical stage biopharma looking to raise $86.3 million. It is developed a cancer inhibitor as a combo therapy. So far, it has raised around $181 million. The company withdrew from an earlier IPO but boasts AstraZeneca vet Briggs Morrison and a range of new deals. On Monday, it also added a deal with Pfizer and Merck. Now, Syndex combined its HDAC inhibitor with Avilumab. The cancer drug is also being paired with Merck's Keytruda. Now, a separate study has been lined up in combination with Rox Atezolizumab. Straight ahead, we head across the pond for a look at what's happening in the European markets when Small Cap Nation comes right back. Good. Very good. You see something moving off the shelves, and your first thought is to investigate the company. You are Type E. Yes, investment opportunities can be anywhere. <laughs> or not. But you know the difference. E-Trade's barcode scanner. Shorten the distance between intuition and action. E-Trade. Opportunity is... Before they sat down, one more time, just for themselves, before the last grandchild graced the stage. Before Katie and her husband hit that rough patch. Before Kevin finally came home and the first grandchild arrived. Before the sons-in-law, daughters-in-law, 
and Brad's brief brush with the law. Before the second British invasion. Before Katie, Debbie, Kevin, and Brad. Before they became a family. There was a connection that started it all and made the future the wonderful thing it turned out to be. We know we're not the center of your life, but we'll do our best to help you connect to what is. Sometimes the present looked bright, sometimes romantic. There were tears in my eyes and tears in my eyes. And so many little things that we learned were really the biggest things. Through it all, we saved and had a retirement plan and someone who listened and helped us along the way because we always knew that someday the future would be the present. Every someday needs a plan. Talk with us about your retirement today. Graham, how have the European markets been behaving today? Well, after yesterday's historic plunge and uh, the worst start uh, to the new year in years, uh, some of the markets have recovered a little. London, Milan and Madrid are just up on yesterday's close, not uh, the year end. Uh, Frankfurt is still off, particularly hit by VW, who've now been hit by uh, DOJ uh, action. So they're, they're, VW's down significantly. And Paris and Amsterdam are still falling. Uh, all the market movements up or down are less than 1% in either way. So uh, we're not going anywhere in a hurry. Euro has moved off, dropping below the 080 number, uh, as has the pound uh, down below 1.45 uh, in the face of the strengthening dollar. I don't suppose anybody other than tourists would be complaining about that. On the data front, uh, there was a big jump in consumer credit in the UK uh, in uh, November to December, 8.3 increase, percentage increase, which uh, I don't know if it's a run up to Christmas, but is uh, probably what was driving the UK ec economic growth up to that point. On the other hand, consumer prices in Germany just went up 0.3% uh, uh, year on year in December, which was lower than the increase in the, pre the previous month and half of what the market expectations were mainly due to a slowdown in food prices, uh, but nevertheless, no inflation. Uh, and unemployment in Germany is holding steady at 4.5%, uh, whilst the Eurozone as a whole, of course, is still continuing at an average of 11%. Consumer prices in the Eurozone uh, are expected to go up just 0.2% uh, in December, uh, the same as in the previous month and below, I don't know, market expectations or market hopes more likely. And core inflation uh, in the euro area, again, similarly, just came up 0.9%, uh, which is the second time the rate slowed uh, from uh, below the 1% uh, back in September, October. So. <clears throat> All in all, no inflation in the system uh, as yet and uh, very slow, little data uh, that's encouraging elsewhere. Well, Graham, what are we looking at today? We're looking at uh, and taking a view on what the European pundits are saying uh, they think is going to be the case for 2016. Uh, on the economic front, uh, the adjustment to the new normal of low growth in the global economy seems to be the main driver. Chinese growth probably going to continue at a lower level, 5 to 8% best. Indian growth continues to be limited by government interference in business. So not a lot of hope there, I think, for new business. Continuing pressure on commodity and oil price says will uh, limit rises there. So inflation is expected to continue below target due to overcapacity in production and people in Europe. Uh, and as a result, the ECB 
and the Bank of England will continue their limited expansion and we're not expecting any rate rises very soon, possibly not at all. Germany continues to have slow growth in 2016. Britain limited growth, although it's not been as good lately as it should be. And the rest of Europe, very little growth. Strengthening dollar will help German and British exports as the euro and the pound are weakened. So that's the economic view. In politics, uh, the continuing issues with the unresolved uh, migration refugee crisis will overhang undoubtedly European politics. But at the potential political backlash to the migration refugee crisis, particularly in Germany, uh, will probably come to the fore somewhere in the next few months. Continued advancement of parties opposed to austerity, the EU in general and the Euro in particular in southern and central Europe and a movement uh, away from closer U EU integration which is the sort of holy grail of France and Germany probably more in Eastern Europe who have been very resistant uh, so far in the migrant crisis. More pressures also on devolution Scotland possibly again particularly if the Britex comes forward the Catalans the Basques uh, and others and most of all in uh, political terms the Britex debate will undoubtedly create economic and business uncertainty in Britain as well as the rest of the EU. The main European markets are not expected to be too exciting in 2016, that's the general view. Continued pressure on oil and commodity based companies and possibly some potential M&A activity in those sectors maybe create some interest but overall London is expected to be largely flat over the next year. Euro next, so Paris, Brussels, Amsterdam, Lisbon, limited growth uh, particularly if no action is taken by the politicians to improve competitivity uh, in those countries. Frankfurt will undoubtedly continue to grow slowly uh, as its export markets re-establish with support of course from the famous Mittelstand, uh, the small cap area. Uh, smaller markets will continue to advance a little, some have done very well this year Driven, but driven by a few companies in each market. And Graham, what about the small cap world? Well, in the small cap markets, we may have some opportunities. London AIM, with its reliance on overseas based companies, some 40 plus percent uh, to provide growth. So possibilities there. Um, whilst investor reluctance uh, will create difficulty for smaller companies trying to raise capital, there is potential for larger capital raising uh, and M&A, particularly I think in the pharma sector where there are a lot of individual small companies already cooperating and possibly also in the oil uh, sector as well. Euro next, Alta next, similar to the main markets, limited growth due to local market conditions probably unless there are changes uh, in employment rules, etc., particularly which impact the SMEs. Frankfurt SDAX, particularly reliant on the continuing performance of the middle stand. Smaller markets could offer some interesting individual uh, company opportunities on a one by one basis. For initial public offerings this year will probably be a lowish number as in 2015, maybe one or two large uh, techs coming to market but generally uh, it's going to be discouraged I think. London AIM uh, will rely on larger entrants to provide growth opportunities mainly from high tech I think and financial services startups coming to market and I would expect we would expect to see some growth in foreign based companies continuing to join the AIM for its liquidity. Euronext, Alternex and Frankfurt Probably uh, concentration continuing on privately owned fi family companies going public. 
with the addition of some high-tech startups. Uh, and in other markets, I think limited appetite in the less liquid markets uh, with the general problem. In summary, I think the pundits appear to believe that 2016 is going to be a pretty uninspiring year. So we shall see. The start, of course, to yesterday on the stock market certainly was not encouraging. So that's uh, it's for Small Cap Nation Europe. This is goodbye from Graham Brown. We'll take you to San Francisco next when Small Cap Nation comes right back. Everyone works hard for a reason. Working together, we can help you prepare financially for when two becomes three. Wells Fargo, together we'll go far. You want to be the best investor you can be. You want to cut through the noise of an overwhelming amount of analysis. You want the insights that will help you decide which ideas to execute and which to leave behind. You want your trades executed in one second or less, guaranteed and routed with institutional quality technology. Look no further. Open an account and find more of the expertise you need to be a better investor. When I got the phone call that we had received the grant, I held my breath. To have a program like this is a big reward. Being a Chase Mission Main Street grant recipient is a game changer. One of the biggest surprises in starting a small business is the number of hours we should work for the first 20 years. <laughs> One of the great things about this grant is that it is going to let us invest in some additional inventories. It's going to allow this business to go to the next level. Being a recipient of this grant, we can't be thankful enough. It's a dream come true, and I'm still in awe. Well, in the tech world, all the eyes are on the annual CES in Las Vegas every year. Innovative technologies and products are introduced. Over 20,000 new products will be showcased this year alone. Now, what are some of the trends that investors should keep an eye on? If you're into futuristic tech gadgets, this is an exciting time of year. No doubt with so many gadgets, it's hard to keep track of all the innovations. Officially, the trade show begins on Wednesday, but many companies are already announcing products and media events are well underway. Consumer technology the Technology Association is behind CES and it forecasts a dip in global tech sales. At a media event, it warned that sales will fall 2% to 950 billion US dollars in 2016. As for trends, expect virtual reality sales to spike 440% from last year to 540 million dollars. Other so-called trendy consumer tech, including 4K HDTVs and drones, may fly off shelves. Drone sales are forecast to bring in 953 million dollars and 4K Ultra HD. TVs to pull in $10.7 billion. Meanwhile, tried and true categories are expected to grow at a slower pace. Expect smartphone sales to rise 4% and laptop sales to rise 3%. Over half of industry revenue comes from smartphones, laptops, desktops, tablets, and TVs. In one year from now, each category will drop to less than half of industry revenue. What are some of the exciting gadgets that are expected? The new year means resolution, so not surprisingly, fitness tech and wearables are popular. Also, IoT offerings stand out along with a plethora of smart everything. There are smartphones, smart clothing, smart appliances, as well as electric cars and safety tech. Now, Acton revealed its latest product in an electronic skateboard. The Blink is controlled with a small handheld device. A smartphone app can also be used. Remember, this is the company behind Rocket Skates. 
And the 360 fly camera is the size of a small ball and it has one lens as well as a 4K image sensor inside to allow for spherical view videos. Meanwhile, Zero developed a modular robotics kit that lets people create their own robot in just 30 minutes. Simply program it via an app and then use a smart glove for gesture control. Separately, Zortex showed off its smart shoes. You can adjust the temperature of your shoe with an app as well as measure your steps. These shoes will retail for $450. And of course, Faraday Future unveiled its electric car prototype dubbed the FF01 concept. The company is backed by Chinese internet TV provider Le TV. It says it is on course to deliver its first production vehicle in two years' time. And once the product announcements start rolling out, it will be easy to get drawn into the excitement. So what should we keep in mind? CES organizers are getting used to the overwhelming number of announcements. They have pointed out that products should be relevant and improve lives. With so many offerings that rely on an intertwined network of technology and products, expect to see more partnerships between companies. Also, with the prevalence of some technologies, previously expensive tech has become more affordable. For example, sensors are becoming commonplace, so they are being built into more products. Listen up, investors. What to buy, sell, or hold our daily segment on what the experts are recommending when Small Cap Nation returns. Guys, I got the jerseys. Oh, nice. yeah. 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 El Nino. Aquí. Ready? Spray Dan. Oh, yeah. Don Ovan. Think that's me? You guy. It's 40 bucks. Can you cover that? I'll send it to you right now. Done. OK, got it. So Hattrick Rick, he's the best player on our team. You get the ball, you give it to him. Great. Rick. Ooh. On your phone, online, on the go. Wells Fargo makes it easy to get banking done. All right, Don, you're on. Nope, just kidding. Doug, <gasps> you've been staring at that for a while, huh? Listen, TD Ameritrade has former floor traders to help walk you through that complex trade, so you'll be confident enough to do what you want. I'll pull up your number. <laughs> the Lamo. Let's get those guys on the horn. <laughs> Mm. Ooh. Looks like it is time to upgrade your phone, Douglas. For all the confidence you need, TD Ameritrade, you got this. Let's go, Serena. Fight, fight. Come on, fight. It took tennis legend Serena Williams, fencing champion Tim Morehouse, and the world-famous Rockettes years to master their craft. But it took them only moments to master paying bills at Chase.com, depositing checks at Chase ATMs, and transferring funds on the mobile app. Technology designed for you so you can easily master the way you bank. Well, lots of activity in today's buy, sell, hold, action, build, bear, cut to market perform at BMO Capital. C&G Services cut to sector weight at KeyBank. Edwards Life was rated a new hold at Evercore ISI. Hawaiian Holdings cut to hold at Deutsche Bank. Prosperity Bank Shares rated a new underweight at JP Morgan. And Republic Airways cut to hold at Deutsche Bank. Thanks for joining us on Small Cap Nation, and we'll see you back here tomorrow. Until then, check back for the latest news and research on smallcapnation.com, Facebook, and Twitter.